What is up YouTube? Christine with Gage Girl Training here, an online meal planning and coaching service. And today we are gonna go in depth on pre-workout supplements. So let's get started. All right guys, so everybody wants to maximize their effectiveness in the gym. And if you were told that you could take something before you work out that would help make your workout more effective, help you perform better and give you more energy, the majority of you would probably say, why not? However, however, comma, there is a lot of things you guys need to know about pre-workout supplements that is not written out there in plain English. I'm gonna break a lot of things down for you, including how pre-workout supplements work, number one. Number two, are they safe? Number three, what things you need to be aware of and what ingredients you need to run away from. And last but not least, should you be taking one? So what is a pre-workout supplement? A pre-workout supplement is also known as an ergogenic aid. Now these supplements make it possible to have an increase in, in endurance and muscle gains. And this allows you to accelerate your muscle growth by enabling a sustainable increase in your energy, your endurance, your focus, as well as your pump. Now, how does that work? How do you even do that? The key in, to accomplishing that is by providing the end user a concentrated amount of central nervous system stimulants, and they have to be formulated at an effective dose. And one common stimulant used is something called methylated xanthines. I'm gonna get into more detail about what methylated xanthines are, what you need to know about them, what their common names are, what they're called on the label so you can look out for them and know what, what is what on the label. So methylated xanthines are commonly known as things that we refer to as caffeine, theobromine, theophylline, paraxanthine, and there are several others with other fancier names, but these are probably some of the most common ones. Again, theobromine, theophylline, caffeine, and just because something naturally came from a green coffee bean extract or it sounds natural or guarana, which is another one you need to watch out for, it doesn't necessarily mean that you should assume it's safe because it's all about making sure that it has effective concentrated dosages, which are also, they're safe, but effective. So that line has been blurred for a very long time with pre-workout supplements. And I'm going to explain to you guys a lot of things that have happened in the industry around pre-workout supplements that you would just be shocked and astounded by. Now, can I tell you by product X, use this promo code? Sure, I can. However, I want you guys to be able to have the knowledge to make educated decisions for yourself when consuming a product like this. And because there's so many things on the market, there's lots of different companies that make great products. My company makes good products. I'm sure some of your favorite sponsored athletes do so as well. But the thing is, those people who promote products and put a promo code and they're like, oh wow, this tastes yummy. It tastes like the newest watermelon candy they are not necessarily qualified to tell you whether or not that product is safe and or effective for you. So the first thing I wanna talk about are pre-workout supplements that have been banned and why. The first original pre-workout supplement that was really popular for a long time was called Jack 3 d by a company called USP Labs. This product had a very long run, was a successful product, won product of the year on bodybuilding.com so many times in a row. And it wasn't until about 2012, 2013 that the FDA started issuing warning letters due to the presence of an ingredient called DMAA. DMAA stands for dimethylamylamine. So again, DMAA, not MDMA for you guys who like to party and MDMA, if you guys don't know, that's ecstasy. So now I'm going to be putting here on the screen, there are names for DMAA because if any of you guys have taken any introductory chemistry classes, organic chemistry, you will know that there are very elaborate naming systems for chemicals. And it's thing as simple as one chemical can have a variety of names that look completely different, sound completely different, even though they are describing the same exact chemical. So you can see this list here on the screen, which describes all of the different ways you can call this chemical. Now, why is this ingredient banned? Why is it bad? DMAA is a stimulant and the presence of it in that product was actually on order of about 25 milligrams per serving. 
very, very low concentration, and it is actually a recreational party drug in New Zealand. And I know that for Muscle Gauge Nutrition, we used to private label a similar product with, um, with a similar formulation to the um, USP Labs Jack 3D, where I reversed engineered it, put it back together, and we private labeled this for a variety of companies. And you now I've taken this ingredient. It's safe. However, the reason the FDA has banned it is because they it is lacking safety data proving the efficacy, uh, proving that it is safe. And the FDA is out there to protect public health and safety. And for that reason, they took it down. Now, as far as my knowledge goes, nobody has ever died from taking it. But there is a big difference between taking something with DMAA and a cup of black coffee. Um, from my personal experience, just to explain to you guys what the experience was like, it's, it's, you feel on, you feel energized, but it's like a concentrated, calmed, focused on, and you're not jittery, you just feel on, you feel good, you literally feel like there's parts of your brain opened up that are just not even supposed to be open. So it's a very strong, effective ingredient. However, it has been banned due to the lack of safety data. And I think that's definitely the smart move to make in those circumstances because you don't want to make an example of anybody. You definitely don't want anyone to be hurt. So for that reason, that ingredient is banned. To know about that has been banned um, is a product called Craze by Driven Sports. Now Craze has been the 2012 bodybuilding.com supplement of the year and the active ingredient that has received a lot of scrutiny is something called N-alpha D-E-P-E-A which is essentially methamphetamine and the owner of, not the owner, the, the chief scientist formulator for that brand, actually a very talented and brilliant chemist but unfortunately has a history of doing some, I would say sketchy things with dietary supplements and actually has had several felonies and has done time in prison as a result of cooking up some unique weight loss drugs that have resulted in fatalities, which is a shame. But the thing is, as a brand manager for a supplement company, the thing is craze I've tried Craze. It's a it's a crazy product. Craze is an appropriate name, and I've I've personally tried every single pre workout supplement on the market because, as part of my job as a food scientist, um, one thing that I do is I reverse engineer just about every product and creating new formulas. And as somebody who's tried all of these things, it it is I can certainly attest for the effectiveness of pre workout supplements hand down hands down. Without a doubt, I'm going to go through some like more practical pointers for you guys. But the thing is, the people purchasing these products and selling and branding them, you guys, it, as a consumer, you are taking a lot of, you're putting a lot of trust and faith in those people because, you guys, these aren't, especially when it comes to pre-workouts, unlike amino acids, unlike BCAAs, pre-workout supplements can be very powerful. They can be very game-changing, but the thing is, you guys, you gotta know what's inside there. You gotta trust that company. You have to know exactly what's in there and know that it's safe for you. And just because a product has, you know, sponsored athletes with lots and lots of followers, the prettiest packaging, the most YouTube subscribers, the most Instagram followers, you know, they're on the top 10 on bodybuilding.com, those things do not necessarily mean that it's, it, it, it's, that it's safe. I repeat, those things do not mean that it is safe. And Craze is a perfect example of this. 2012 bodybuilding.com product of the year. It's freaking meth. It's meth, you guys. Fruit flavored meth. What do you need to know about pre-workout supplements? There are a few things. Number one thing that you want to look at in a pre-workout supplement, number one, I want you to look at the serving size. A pre-workout supplement is a powder. It should have a small serving size. The powder texture and consistency should be somewhat of a fine white powder. Some of them can be more amber in nature due to the nature of any extracts that are herbal. So it can have like a brownish, greenish tinge depending on what herbal extracts you have in there. But the serving size should be small, you guys. And the reason I'm telling you guys, number one, to look at the serving size, a lot of people won't tell you this. 
a lot of times you are just paying for the flavoring system and you are not just, you're not paying for the active ingredients because if a, for the majority of users of pre-workout supplements, if it doesn't taste like Kool-Aid, they won't take it. However, the flavor of a pre-workout supplement has zero to do with its efficacy. It can taste amazing. It can taste like lollipops and candy canes and all this kind of stuff, but it doesn't have anything to do with the effectiveness. Now, certainly you would want your pre-workout supplement to taste good and it would take an extremely experienced formulator to accomplish that. However, what I'm trying to say is if the serving size is too big, there's a couple red flags that go off in my mind right away. Number one, I think immediately there's fillers in the product because the dosages of concentrated central nervous stimulants that you would need to take to get an effective boost in your energy, endurance, performance, you really don't need to be much higher than five grams, 10 grams maximum. I mean, absolute maximum. I mean, 10, 10 grams is pushing it in my opinion. I mean, we're talking like five, 10 gram range. If you see a pre-workout supplement that's upwards of 20 grams, you are being sold sugar water. So call, call it whatever you will. I don't care what brand it is. I don't care who, how big of a company they are. You're being sold sugar water. Number two, number two, you want to look at the caffeine content. Now, if the caffeine content is not expressly written on the label, you at the consumer have every single right to call up that company and be like, hey, how much caffeine is in this? And they need to tell you that. So a lot of people put proprietary blends in, on there. Some of them, some people do it to protect themselves as a business and I completely understand that. However, you as a consumer have every right to know how much caffeine is in the product. Now there are some pre-workouts. Um, one is called like Jekyll and Hyde that has 500 milligrams of caffeine in one serving. It's like, that makes my eyeballs twitch just thinking of that level of caffeine. I'm, PI Sports has a product, 1MR, or 300 plus milligrams per serving. You really want to carefully read how much caffeine is in there. I mean, you really, I'd say 200 milligrams max, like maximum, maximum, maximum. But if you were just taking it just for the caffeine, if there, are, there, if there isn't like a blend of other central nervous system stimulants, between other methylated xanthines other than just caffeine, you probably are better off just drinking a cup of black coffee before a workout. Now there are benefits to taking a blend of, of methylated xanthines before a pre-workout. I can get into that. I'm probably gonna have to do several videos on this, but check out how much caffeine. I would say don't go much more than 100 to 200 milligrams per serving. Now go higher at your own risk, but watch the caffeine content. The next thing I want you guys to look at when you're looking at a pre-workout supplement is the creatine content. I speak this specifically to females because if you wanted to take a creatine supplement, you should take a creatine supplement. Creatine has very specific benefits that I can get into. Now, creatine is put in some pre-workout supplements because it boosts something called phosphocreatine. Phosphocreatine content is something that's in your muscles that buffers your muscles when you are exposed to high intensity exercise. Now, the thing is though, that's fine and that tends to be good for men, but for women, when it comes to creatine, you definitely want to not take too much. And if you are taking a product, again, that has a blend of ingredients and it says creatine, but it doesn't state the amount of creatine, call up the company and ask or write them an email. They should be more than willing and able to disclose that amount to you. Creatine, as I have stated, if it's the creatine monohydrate form of that molecule, it is going to cause you to gain water weight. It's going to cause water. Creatine monohydrate binds water on the inside of your muscles. Men don't, don't care because it makes them look bigger, but women, um, females are gonna care and you're gonna notice a difference. And for me personally, in my personal experience, I was taking a pre-workout supplement. Creatine actually caused me to break out. And for females, I suggest if you're gonna take a, pre a creatine supplement to help build muscle, it's a great ingredient, not hating on creatine, but it can cause some water weight gain in females. But if you take the creatine ethyl ester form or the creatine nitrate form of that molecule, you will not experience that result. So if you are taking a pre-workout supplement that does have creatine in it, 
don't go much more than a gram, maybe two grams max, the, the pre-workout benefit from it without getting into significant bloating. Now, another thing that you'll see common in a lot of pre-workout supplements is ingredients known to give pump. Now, pump is going to allow more blood to rush to your muscles. It's going to allow you to get more effective lifts. It's going to support muscle gains, and all of that is great. However, you need to know what ingredients are gonna be most effective for that. Now, in the L-arginine was like the thing, L-arginine AKG. There's several forms of L-arginine, you guys. There are so many forms of L-arginine, so just because somebody says L-arginine, there's L-arginine base is completely different than L-arginine AKG. So I, I really feel like I'm gonna have to do like a big series on this to like really just explain everything in detail. But the thing is, L-arginine has been known to boost your nitric oxide content in your body. That causes your blood vessels to dilate, has a vasodilating effect. It's great for boosting testosterone. This is great for rushing blood, and it is good at pumping blood through your muscles to boost muscle growth. Great. However, L-arginine is not the only game in town to boost NO content, and we are starting to see that in studies, consumption of L-arginine content does not necessarily always boost nitric oxide content on its own. And what we're finding is there's other ingredients, specifically one ingredient I really want you guys to look out for, which is a good ingredient, a great ingredient you definitely want to see in your pre-workout supplements. And that is something called citrulline malate. Citrulline malate is excellent at boosting your natural L-arginine levels in your blood. It will naturally boost the NO levels without having to consume L-arginine. And another interesting fact about citrulline malate is it tastes good. A lot of these uh, acids taste terrible. Like they taste so bad. I've tasted every single amino acid, every single stimulant. I've tasted them all. I've worked with them all. I've worked with every single powder. Like I literally in my lab, I could literally have every single powder and like almost organoleptically identify each one just based off of like the way the powder looks, smells, tastes, all that kind of stuff. But a lot of these ingredients, they taste very bitter. And citrulline malate has like a sour type of a taste. It has like a citrus note. And things like citrus, citric acid, malic acid, malic acid, which is commonly found in apples, the items that I personally like to formulate with because they are natural ingredients, but they can also boost the flavor in a very nice and pleasant way. But in general, you guys, there are a lot of different things that you should know about pre-workout supplements. I would like you to use these tips next time you're shopping for your pre-workout supplement. And I'm going to do a follow-up video on this talking about more ingredients commonly found in pre-workout supplements, what you need to know about them. I'm gonna talk to you guys about everything from phenylethylamine, shishandra, bitter orange. There's just so many other ingredients I feel that I need to talk about in more detail that I'm not gonna get to cover all in this video. So I wanna thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for the next one. See you soon. Give it a thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up.